Welcome to the BGSU Summer Study Tour to Poland. The first site we saw was the Wawel Castle. This castle was once home to all the kings and queens of Poland and is now home to the world's largest collection of 16th century tapestries. Everything within the castle felt huge. The church, the courtyard, the tapestries, and uh, right. We weren't allowed to take pictures, so thank you, internet. We saw rooms that looked like this, and this, and we were lucky enough to get to stand five feet away from a Da Vinci painting that looked like this. Afterward, we got to see the dragon of Krakow. Local legend says there used to be a dragon that terrorized the town. He killed every knight who came for him until finally a local shoemaker tricked the dragon into eating a fake sheep filled with sulfur, so the dragon became very, very thirsty, and as his insides burned, and he went to the river and drank so much water that he exploded. Trying to find the main square the first night was an adventure. It took us well over an hour, but we knew that we were very close when we found this church. And finally, we made it to the main square, and wow. I just, wow, the main square is huge. There are people all over. There were street performers and vendors. You could buy fresh flowers, food, ice cream stands everywhere. Live music, it was awesome. Jagosh took us to see the ancient entrance and keep. This is where people would have to pass through ages ago to enter Krakow. And then we went through Cloth Hall where I did all of my gift shopping for friends and family back home. It was one of my favorite places to walk through. It was so neat. Now, our second day to Poland, we visited Auschwitz-Birkenau. I was very nervous making my way to Auschwitz. I didn't know what to expect. Yes, I've studied it for years, but there was no real way to be prepared for walking through the actual camp. We walked into the area, and I just looked around, taking it all in. I spotted the main gate right away, and the emotions caught me there. There it was. The infamous Arbe Makhfrei. It felt surreal. Auschwitz's main camp is fairly small. It served mostly as an administrative center during the time. Because this place survived, it has now become a museum. And the museum was extremely well done. There were large pictures that covered the walls. And it wasn't overcrowded. It was very simple. It really just kept the solemn atmosphere of the place. There were many artifacts of the victims that were preserved to show of the atrocities. Empty cans of Zyklon B, piles of reading glasses, tons and tons of shaven hair, and a room filled with 80,000 shoes. It took me two minutes to walk up and down the room. 80,000 shoes. And this is only a fraction of the shoes that were stolen from the victims. We also saw the only surviving gas chamber, and this is the only picture I took. The inside was something I could never prepare for, and no picture or video could ever properly express what I felt. You walk inside and you see the cold, bare, concrete walls. And towards the top, you can see the scratches from the fingernails of the victims, who were trying to climb out and escape. It is very clear that the scratches were from human fingernails. Once everyone had left, I stayed behind. I stood in the room by myself and just slowly looked around. I tried to imagine hundreds of people crammed in here. The sudden darkness, the screams and scramble for impossible escape. It was overwhelming. Auschwitz-Birkenau was much different than I expected it to look. It was big, actually, it was, it was huge. I don't even have words to describe how large the place was. We got to see recreations of the barracks and the area where people were selected. We walked down the path that those selected to die walked. I filmed the entire walk. It took us six minutes. Six minutes. I took that time to reflect, to try and imagine what it felt like being hurried along this path, not knowing what was ahead. The fear of being in a foreign and cold place, surrounded by soldiers after a harsh journey in a cattle car, possibly having watched loved ones die during that journey, and then being separated from anyone who remained. We 
We made it to the ruins of the gas chambers and crematoriums. It was there I first noticed the birds were singing. Walking over to the second one, it was just incomprehensible to think of how many people were murdered within. On the other side, I didn't get video, but I got two pictures. There were pits where the ashes of those murdered were dumped. Over time, these pits filled with water. And what was most interesting to me was that small little lily pads were now growing over the ashes. To me, that was the greatest symbol of hope. The Nazis set out to exterminate anything that disagreed with their worldview. They took the lives of millions. The Nazis took them from their homes, their families, they took their possessions, their health, their laughter. They tried to break them and eliminate any trace of them. But they failed. And now the Nazis are long gone. And time has passed. You can see now that the old scars have slowly healed. Nature has returned. New life now thrives where there was once only death and desolation. To me, that just shows that there is always hope for healing. It may take years, but healing and peace will come. I had gone to Auschwitz thinking that I would only be met with tears and brokenness. I came out with peace and serenity. That was by far our most solemn and heavy day of the trip. We also got to explore Nova Huta. Stalin's idealistic communist city he built in Poland. It was interesting to walk around and see that this is what Stalin envisioned as the perfect communist city. It was very easy to see that all the buildings were made to blend with one another and not stand out. This was Cold War ideology at its finest. It's not until now as I edit this video together that I realize how much this trip came around full circle. One of the first places we visited was the main square, and here we are, back to it on our last night but this time as friends. We set out on a journey that took us to ancient castles and churches, to heartbreaking moments in human history, through communism and the Cold War, and here we are in today. We see how alive and well life has continued here in Poland, despite all that happened in the past. There were many valuable lessons to be learned throughout our journey, and I can guarantee you that each one of us learned something different. It is very obvious from my video here that visiting Auschwitz was the most impactful event of the trip for me. But overall, I've noticed that many people travel abroad thinking they'll learn much about others. And they will. But from my experience, you learn the most about yourself. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so glad I got that on camera. <laughs> Did you really?